All right, what I've got here now is I'm zooming in on some tight footage of the L.A. bank robbery. Emil Zamata and uh, Capriano. And here's where the chopper first encounters them. He's shaking a lot. That's not me. And they're engaging the police back across the parking lot in North Hollywood at the bank where the cops have barricaded their ring of fire around the suspects and are taking aim and shooting them repeatedly to no effect. <clears throat> One of the bank robbers is already in the getaway car, as you see right there. And he's going to try to drive tactically while the other guy shoots his way through the melee. It's pretty nuts. I've been a student of this footage since it came out, February 28th of... 97, I believe it was. One of the rawest bank robberies on earth. Too bad these guys couldn't shoot worth a damn. And I know I get a lot of comments. Oh, if you could have done better. Well, for one, I'm not a bank robber. I work for a living. But for two, I would have done better because I'm a good, 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 good shot. But um, I wouldn't rob a bank. So. And I sure as hell wouldn't have a shootout with cops. Fuck it, I'm a mechanic. That's a lot easier than this. But now you see the stupid camera TV operator guy zoom out when he should have zoomed in. He's trying to catch action, but you can't catch no action from that kind of altitude. So he's letting him have it. He's got armor-piercing rounds. He's an M16, AK-47, and a 308. Plus, they both got 9mm Berettas and uh, one revolver, I believe. There's already two cops injured, one by a tree... Uh, let's see, south of this location, shot in the stomach and uh, leg, and the other officer was rescued by a squad car already. And here we have, I think that's a meal on beside this truck. He abandoned the car and he's going to try to shoot it out. I don't know why he left the guy, his other guy over there. It irritates me that we can't see what's going on. Now you got this freak back again. He's driving erratically. They should have got in the car and dipped and let the freaking guns rip out the back window. But whatever. Who knows what these guys were thinking. I heard that they were all drugged up on barbiturates. That they ate a couple tabs before they went into the bank to do their robbery. And I don't doubt it whatsoever. You'd need some mind-altering something to freaking think that you could have a chance of pulling this off. Really what I want to capture is um, the guy shoots himself in the head. I think he was trying to reload with one hand and accidentally pulled the trigger. Although I doubt it. One of them cops could have phased him in the top of the cap anyway. But um, we'll see that on this footage. So stick around. You will see dude bump around under his own chin. Which was like wow to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I think we're coming upon the uh, the guy's original rest, resting place. Now, this was footage that I had to painstakingly acquire. This was chopper footage, and I can't say from who because I don't want them putting a copyright claim on me. This is for open discussion and critique, so they can't put a violation of a copyright on here anyway. You know, this is public property for the public record. He's gotten rid of his rifle. Now he's got his handgun. And as you can see here, it was just fortuitous. They zoomed in the right time. He's going to kill himself right now. Boom. Under the chin, through the back of the head, down. And then you can see they hit him a couple more times. You see the dirt kicking up. Still kicking up dirt. Oh, one in him right there. Shot him in the head again. Shot in front of him again and again. They're probably dumping buckets of bullets into this guy. So that's it for Zamata. He's dead. Now his buddy ghosted. Tore up the street. He should have been letting it rip. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. When you see he's trying to engage citizens. I think he's trying to carjack a car right up here. And the guy just said F that and backed out of there. He probably didn't want to hurt civilians. Hopefully. Sorry about this sloppy camera work, you guys. I'm trying to do too many things at once here. 
and I need a gimbal for this thing to operate properly, but this is me being 100% steady and the camera's gimbal is shaking around because I don't think he has it mounted to a gyro. This dude's about as casual as they come. It looks like he's already got a leg injury. He's limping. He sort of threw his guns down, man. And they said they took him into custody. And you see him in front of the car when they finally do take him into custody. But um, I think they probably killed him or suffocated him or something. They, you know, they're booting him in the face after he was already shot and handcuffed. And typical, typical police tactics. I mean, I don't blame them. They're probably mad. Their buddies were got shot. You know. But if they wanted to beat on him or abuse him after he was in custody, they should have just killed him before he was in custody. And then, of course, being shot multiple times, they just left him there in front of the car to bleed out. That's probably what they were hoping for, and that is probably what happened. He probably bled out. I don't know. I can't find any information on this guy ever. There you see he was maybe thinking about, hmm, do I carjack this car? I don't know. And you'll see here when he stops and the SWAT team comes with their bulletproof vests over the windows of the squad car, try to take him into custody. He shoots through the window of his car, the front window, and the side windows and posts. Instead of just reaching up and over or taking an offensive position, standing in the middle of the street, jumped out, letting it rip, he could have tore through the windshield of the squad car and maybe took it or had a possibly different way to get away. But... um I'm not on anyone's side. I don't have a dog in this fight. You guys will be like, oh, he's anti-cop, he's whatever. I'm not anti-cop. We're just pro-bandit. This country has stolen all of our real estate. I shouldn't even say this country. The bureaucrats and criminals in government in this country. We don't have real estate. Just two generations ago, my family owned thousands of acres. I don't even own a house. Nothing was ever passed down to me. I didn't trick nothing off. That was all seized. The last 360 acres we had... They discovered massive amounts of coal on the bottom of the ground. And my grandma was old. She was like 98. And they were like, oh, if you just donate this to us, we can make great use of it. We'll take care of your family. They never gave us a dime. My mom is suing them right now, trying to get the property back. But, yeah, so we like to see our robbers get away, but we don't want to see nobody get hurt. You know, everybody loves to think they're going to trick their way into a million or two dollars. Not me, because I know that'll never happen. But I don't even think the lottery or nothing like that. I don't even play it. Well, when it gets really high, I do, but, you know, 300 million, then I'll go drop a dollar or two, but I'm not going to win, so. Yeah, and you'll see how the cops zoot up to block that truck getaway because they're fearing he's going to carjack, and, you know, the truck, and I know what happened here. That truck is a stick shift, and when he get in there to look, when he got in there to look, and he's like, oh, it's a stick, I don't know how to drive a stick. Okay, so the guys can't shoot. They got homemade body armor on, and he can't drive a stick. What the hell kind of bank robber is this? I can shoot fine, and I can drive a stick like a maniac, but I'm not a bank robber. So I only got two of the three. He's only got one of the three. See, he gets in there. He's, oh, it's a stick. I'm too dumb. Uh, uh, I don't know what to do. Now the cops are there. See, he should have dipped out as soon as he got out. He should have dipped out and let it rip, you know, put his gun right out through the front, through the door crack in the window, and let it rip. And those dudes would have had to retreat. He's got an automatic 308. He's going to get got because he's stupid. And dumb people die all the time. And so do smart people, but not as often. So he's already been shot in the shoulder, the head, the body, the torso several times. Now he's just shooting through the car, not even aiming in the direction of his aggressors. So he deserves to die for being stupid. If you're his family member watching this, then you're stupid too for having him in your freaking family. I mean, look, these guys are still packed up, stacked up in the car, trying to let it rip out the back window. They didn't deploy either. So he could have just ran at him ah, and gassed him, and they would have had nothing. If you're about to die and you got an automatic rifle, don't tip your little head back and hide. Run up on that black and whatever. Well, not the black and white. I'm just saying, whoever they are, the cops too, they should have got out, ran up on dude. The first one might have got shot. Even the second one would have got shot, but the third one would have pasted him. So in the cop's case, they should have ran up on him. And in the bandit's case, they should have ran up on him. But then he's going to surrender like a little biatch. 
And this is one of a kind footage, you guys. It took me a long time to get this footage. And the only reason for the commentary over the top of this is because A, I know every fact of this case, and B, I want to give you guys a play-by-play -play breakdown on what's really happening here. Once again, he's firing over the top. He's got a stovepipe. I know that his rifle stovepiped. Stovepiping is when you shoot around and the case doesn't eject from the barrel properly, so you have to clear the breech. I'm not sure if not military people call it stovepiping. I think you guys have a different different word for that. Okay, so he's got hands up. They're rushing with long guns that they got from the local uh, rifle store. Of course, they're going to boot him under the chin and kick him and beat on him, you know, because that's what the cops really get off on. They don't get off on shooting because they shoot guns all the time. If he can put his boot under your chin and break your jaw, then that's what that guy gets off on. Ooh, we I can bone the old lady now with my pee pee. Then you got 13 cops that run up on him. And that's basically a wrap, you guys. This is already 11 minutes long, so I want to cut this close. But I want you to remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel as I depend on your viewership um, to promote my channel. I don't make any money from here. Well, I have made 11 cents in 10 years. So, yeah, I'm after the big money. So for hours and hours invested into showing you guys the best footage I can find all over the net, in the world, in person. And personally, I have made 11 cents. So for 300 videos divided by 11 cents, I've made a quarter of a penny per video. Yep, I'm in the big leagues. I'm big time. So yeah, this is Mike the Mac at gmail.com. That's M-I-C-T-H-E-M-A-C-K at gmail.com. You can contact me there if you want a t-shirt or a free tool or a Milwaukee Twisted Iron custom tool shirt, gear, mugs. I'm opening up a full product line this year, and I'm going to need you guys' help to support it. So remember, like share and subscribe the most important thing you can do for me is a subscription and that'll let you know anytime new content comes out and keep you updated thank you guys very much i appreciate your viewership this is mike much love peace love happiness and prosperity be unto you all i pray to god amen